So I'm here today with Abigail. Abigail, tell remind me how to pronounce your second name. I don't want to get it wrong. Well, I say Fahi, but I'm always corrected because my husband's from uh, an Irish family and I always say Fahi. So I'm sorry to any Irish people out there if I pronounce my surname wrong. I always say Fahi, but it's really English and it's, yeah. Well, not if you good. pronounce it wrong, then I'm allowed to pronounce it wrong. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm here with Abigail Fahi. Abigail is a portrait photographer, natural light documentary, mostly, isn't it, Abigail? Yeah, documentary stuff, yeah. So we are here to talk about lots of different things. I know I've said that it's we're going to dive into Instagram and we will because Abigail owns it on Instagram. But we're also going to talk about lots of other things, including Abigail's Project 365 that she did a few years ago that I know has had a huge impact on her and her photography journey and her business. But also how she balances the business alongside having four children and <laughs> all sorts of other stuff that I know you guys are going to find really, really interesting. So before I head over to Abigail to get started, as always, if you have any questions at any point for Abigail, just pop them into the chat. What I will do is I'll be filtering those questions out all the way through our live and asking them one at a time. If I think that they might come up later in the live, I might miss them out, okay, but I have seen them, so don't worry. Right, Abigail, let's get started. We've got lots of people online, very excited to hear from you. We've got Mercedes from Surrey, Rachel Hello. from Cow de Beath, Cara Hi. from Ontario, all over the world, <laughs> Lindsay from ah. Pennsylvania, Fantastic. Mika Michaela is cleaning her bathroom while she listens to us. Missy from like Ohio. <laughs> Kirsty, unfortunately, is listening from her bed with the flu. Oh, dear. <laughs> Catherine, well, <laughs> loads of you. Fantastic. It's great to see you all. Thank you so much for turning up live, especially you guys over across the pond, because I know it's early for you. So that's even more appreciated. Right. <laughs> So I'm excited to speak to Abigail. I came across Abigail, I think, just a couple of weeks ago. Someone posted a link to the video that you have on your website, Abigail, which I love, and we're going to talk about that. But also, I really I kind of fell in love with your photography and your Instagram <laughs> feed, and I just thought we have to get you on. Oh, so you. it would be great. I know it's really cliche, but it would be great if you could just start with just telling us a little bit about yourself and how you came to even start your photography business. Okay, well, no, it is a bit of a cliche. It's the, it's the same old, same old, you know, first child is born, uh, really need a new camera. Um, and I was into photography anyway, but I, I think I got my first DSLR when my daughter was born. That was 13 years ago. Um, and yeah, I just ended up taking tons of photographs of her. And then second shooting for a friend of mine who was a photographer at the time for weddings. Um, realised weddings wasn't for me at the time um, with small children didn't really work um, and then it wasn't until I got until they started school really and I was taking photographs and a, a couple of the mums sort of encouraged me to, to do it a bit more and then somebody asked me to do do something for them and, and then eventually yeah just kind of just organically happens, doesn't happened. It? <laughs> yeah so I started my business about um, nearly five years ago now um and yeah and it's 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 slow progress but it's yeah yeah it takes a it takes hard work but it's getting there <laughs> it sure does it sure does this is the thing that we're always talking about within this group and within our membership is is the journey and and mm. how hard it is and how long it can take but yeah you obviously yeah. enjoy it or you would I do. be doing I it do. No, I do. I thoroughly enjoy it. And I love the fact that it's flexible enough for me to, you know, to have the children and it, and it works around that. But it's it's by no means an easy route, um, I found out. <laughs> Don't we all? Don't we all? Let's, can we talk about those early days just for a little while? Sure. Yeah, sure. I know a lot of our members, especially a lot of the people who are watching at the moment, are in those early days. So it's. Mm. I think when I was in my early days, it really helped me to listen and speak to people who were just further down the road. It just reassured yeah. me and helped me. And 
So can you tell us what your business looked like in those early days and what was the biggest kind of learning experience that you had back then? Right. Well, I mean, I was, uh, yeah, I wanted to do every course I could possibly get my hands on. I was constantly online looking at other photographers and um, trying to find the kind of style that I wanted and um, playing around. So it's, it's, kind of difficult when I look back at you know when I first started it sort of makes me cringe a little bit because I just think oh goodness but you have to start somewhere and I think the only way to do that is to really kind of throw yourself in and just not to get too hung up on your own style or um, just trying too hard really I think I just tried to absorb as much information as I possibly could I watched all sorts of hours and hours of creative live tv just um kind of immerse myself in absolutely everything god um, bless creative life ah, oh i love it <laughs> well, what was, did we do before creative life I, don't know. I, I used to watch it whilst i was cooking i'd watch it in bed it was ridiculous but yeah i just wanted to get my hands on as much information and research as possible um but i mean it is tricky in those early that those sort of early days because you really are it's difficult to find your feet and to find your style and and there's so many different styles out there that you could kind of emulate and I think sometimes you do get a bit schizophrenic with it all but um once I sort of settled into um what I was doing um it came a lot easier and then I found it less important to sort of go online and try and compare myself to everybody else actually so um yeah, you do settle that comparison yeah that is a curse isn't it it is, is a killer yeah. it's a killer do you still yeah. do you still find yourself getting caught out with that sometimes or are you over that stage I, I kind of I don't know I go through fits and spurts really I mean I'm actually fine now it doesn't actually bother me at all I, I enjoy looking at other people's photographs but to be honest with you I think where I got with my business is I started to realize that actually the photographers that I was looking at online as amazing as they were they weren't my clients so I was spending more time looking at what I wasn't achieving as to what I was and actually my clients weren't after that they were after what I was offering um so once I figured that out it actually was much easier to kind of release that and yeah. you know yeah. I will never be the best photographer in the world but I'm definitely not the worst either so I kind of figured well that's okay for me you get that will caught, do. though it, it makes you stuck doesn't it when you start comparing yeah. I think I, I used to get sucked into it. I would see someone that I admired and then I would look on their Facebook page and I would still be there half an hour later. Yeah. And instead of admiring it and aspiring to be that, I just hated yes. on myself thinking, yeah, I'm rubbish compared to them. Yeah. And I'll never be as good as that. And it's just, yeah. it doesn't do anyone any good. I have to remember that Facebook is not real. What you know, what you see is what is it's the best of everybody. That's what they put out there. That's what you put out there. So you know, what you don't see is all the hundreds and thousands of photographs that they've chucked in the bin. Um, and if you did see those and compared yourself to those, then you'd feel an awful lot better about yourself. I think so. It's just trying to keep it real. <laughs> I, what about um, reaching out to other photographers? Have you have you done that over the years? Have you extended your network yeah. so that they're, these people that you used to look up to and compare yourself to are now your friends? Yes, yeah, absolutely. And I think it's a really lovely community, actually, once you start to do that. I think you feel slightly less uh, on your own as soon as you do that as well. And sort of just having conversations with, with – I've got some of my closest friends are photographers, and it's just so lovely to be able to have that kind of chat with them because, I, you know, I did – work out quite quickly that most of my friends didn't really understand what I was talking about most of the time so <laughs> I was just that really geeky kind of yeah. girl that yeah I did, couldn't really have proper conversations with anybody because all I wanted to talk about was photography so as soon as I sort of messaged like ah, you know really kind of jabbering off so um yeah, so it's it's brilliant to have that community and then you can you can actually sort of be with your peers and then be with your friends later on and you've kind of got it out of your system. So that's, that's such good <laughs> advice. Yeah, you, you learn early on not to talk to your friends about your business. Don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> Unless they have a business of their own and then it's great. But otherwise yeah, that's, that's bad. eyes yeah, glaze that. over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so would you say would if you if you were to compare your business in those maybe in that first year, let's say, mm. to your business now what is the biggest difference or what are the biggest differences between then and now 
I think I try and manage my time a lot better now. I'm I'm a lot better at communicating with clients. Um, you know, you get quicker at editing. The, the, the more you do, the more editing you do, the quicker you get. And that really helps because I was spending hours. And I'm sure a lot of people who have just started out will, will spend hours and hours into the evenings, into the early hours of the morning, editing and, and re-editing and re-editing because they're not quite sure of their style or they don't know if that's right. And, um, and I'm a lot quicker at that now. I'm, I'm, I'm better at culling my images. I'm better at editing them. And, you know, I know a lot more now than I did before. I sort of learned how to sort of get into that flow. So my workflow is a lot quicker. Um, so that really helps. Um, yeah, and I think just experience, more experience with clients have, has made made my life a bit easier. So now I can see certain clients, you know, what they're going to want and what they're going to need, and then I can I can be a bit more efficient as far as that's concerned. So it's just t- it's time really trying to manage my time. Yeah, because time is money in the end, it isn't is. it? It absolutely is. Yeah, and you have to make sure that you're actually valuing your time that you're spending doing this so if you if you're charging appropriately then it will be worthwhile but if you're not it's not worthwhile yeah and, it, and it, it's, it just doesn't stay the course in that no, situation no. Does it? no so you need to be careful Lindsay is saying that she is in that vicious cycle right now. This, I think we're possibly talking about the comparison and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Michelle is saying that she'd love some photographer friends. She's found it quite lonely up to this point. Yeah. So what would you be your advice there then, Abigail, if you were wanting to extend your network and have photographer friends? What would yeah. you go for that? Well, I found quite a few forums on uh, Facebook have been pretty good. Um, I found some really good friends on that. Um, and Instagram as well, just, just reaching out to certain people on Instagram that, that you admire. Um, get involved in, uh, you know, there are specific hashtags that you can use where you can get into groups in that, in that way. Use these hashtags on your, on your photos on Instagram and then they can show up in, in different groups and you'll suddenly start to, to see a pattern and a trend with people who are like-minded and um it, i mean it's quite slow progress but it, it it's it's nice and you will find those people i think instagram is very very good community for that actually i find lots of yeah. people who are like-minded on instagram i'm glad you I like. mentioned instagram because <laughs> i'd quite like to go there next um i yeah. am self-confessed rubbish on instagram um, so every time i and i do have a scroll now and again and i'm always i am very admiring of people like yourself who have committed to the whole Instagram platform and really worked hard at your consistency and to develop yeah. this um, a following and lots of engagement because I can see by your Instagram feed that you get lots of engagement there, lots of people actually yeah. commenting as well as liking um, yeah. and it's it was very easy for me to see why. And I love that you've also kind of mentioned that it was slow progress. I would like mm-hmm. to go into that. But what has the journey looked like then from, from the starting off on Instagram to now? What what has happened there with your journey? Well, I think I went over to Instagram um, a couple of years ago, um, sort of really threw myself into it because I just found it a more inspiring place. I think Facebook, as we all know, sort of changed quite dramatically over the last few years. And so I found Instagram a better place to hang out and terms of inspiration and realized quite quickly that unless you engage with other people on Instagram then you can get kind of lost um lost on the feed and it and it it is a community um and so you really do need to comment on other people's photographs or posts um and really get involved I think it's a bit like if you're at a party and uh, you're just stood in the corner you you're there, but you're not talking to anybody and nobody's actually going to notice you. So if you leave, no one really cares. Whereas you have to actually start those conversations in order to have a good evening. So, oh, yes. um, yeah, it's such, it's, such a it's good true. analogy. It's, it's the same with anything in life. You have to kind of give first, don't you? You do. You absolutely do. And, and I think, um, it's a good platform for you to be fairly honest and open and authentic about what you're doing. And I think the more of that, comes out the more people engage and, and actually kind of want to hear more from you so it is about being authentic and honest I think really that kind of helps that comes really easily to some people doesn't it to ju- they just they launch um, a social media profile and they they can be yeah. authentic and genuine and 
engaging right away. And then there's mm. the other tribe who say, I don't know how to do this. I'm I'm from this corporate yeah. background and I can't bring I can't get my personality across. Mm. Would where were you? Where did you sit? In I kind of half uh -huh, I was sort of halfway between the two, I think, to start off with. Um and then I started to notice that the more personal my posts were, the more engagement they got. And so it it sort of I think the less um engaged you are, the less engaged your audience are really. So the more the more posts that you put out there that are actually sort of personal or um, mean something, then they tend to, to, to catch people's attention a little bit better. So it's not just the photograph, it's the caption and what you write with it as well. It's the combination. Yeah, I've noticed that about yours is that you have basically have a story for every image. So and yeah. the, story, the, the image has, for me, an image has to have a story for me to feel connected to it and feel yeah. compelled to comment. And mm. the people who are just putting up images are not getting that same level of, of engagement. No. But that obviously no. takes time on your part. I think it does, but you have to be invested in the image that you're you're posting. You have to know why you're going to post it. If you're just posting it for no reason, then, of course, if you don't get a lot of engagement, you can't really complain. I think if you've invested a lot in taking that photograph, if there's a story behind that particular photograph, and then you write that story down then you're, you're going to engage your audience. So it just really depends. I try and the photographs that I take, I take with intent, and I think that's the difference. Um, and then if you post those, then then, then people uh, respond, I think. It makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense. I often hear, Dermot has said my sound is a bit quiet, so I'm hoping that's an improvement, guys, if you let me know. Um, <laughs> I, something I hear a lot from people is this this complaint about lack of engagement. I'm you know I I'm not getting any followers. I'm not getting much engagement. I don't know what to do, and I'll, often they'll just give up. Yes. Yeah. How how long would you say it took you to start seeing results from Instagram to start getting that traction? I think it took at least six months, um, and I think you have to be committed. So. In terms of every time you go online and you post something, you then go onto other people's feeds and you post a comment on theirs as well. You can't just post something and expect everyone to come flooding to you because it doesn't work that way. Yeah. Yeah. So if you post, then go to five other accounts and, and engage with them as well, and the chances are they'll come back. Um, if people are online at that particular time, that's even better because that helps because Instagram, they change the algorithms all the, all the time, but... Most of the time it works where um, the engagement that you get immediately after you post will actually encourage the post to go further down, down everyone else's feed. So, um, yeah, so as soon as you go on, go and find other people that you want to talk to. Look at their, look through, yeah. the, scroll through your feed and, and comment and like and comment. Um, I suppose you have to ask yourself, am I, so I'm not getting any engagement, but am I engaging with others? You know, Absolutely. You can't expect, you yes. have to give more than you're actually getting in return, don't yes. you? Yes, you do, you do. Um, and, it, and it depends on who your audience are. I think I, I have a lot of photographers follow me, which is lovely, um, but they're not generally my clients. So I have to make sure that I'm engaging with my clients as well because if I want that to turn into a business, um, I need to make sure my clients are online as well and I'm commenting on their feeds, not just every other photographer that... that flies up my feed which is really yeah. difficult to do because it you know there are some incredible photographs there that I want to just write wow that's amazing and you know and and be encouraging and that's and, that, and I do try and do that but at the same time my clients are in that feed somewhere as well and they need to find them and dig them out and then comment on theirs as well. Such good advice something I see a lot is photographers engaging with other photographers and yeah. maybe posting with their peers in mind rather than yeah. their clients in, in yes. mind yeah. and I, I think get it, it but it doesn't really work for business. I think, yeah exactly I think um, I've kind of moved on from that needing that validation from my peers to be honest with you because I've realized that actually that doesn't get me any business so if I want my business to thrive I need to make sure that my clients are the ones that are noticing and posting and commenting on, on what I'm doing it's lovely to, to have conversations with with peers but I would really advise not to go into pods with any other photographers um, it doesn't do you any favors because all it does is bring up their work in your feed and your clients disappear so this is just something we literally just talked about this yesterday in our membership was 
and it's mm-hmm. it's a it's kind of tempting to go into these pods it and, is and you do see more engagement but it's not from the right people it's no it's, no. Not, it's not bringing in the clients no. Exactly. It's targeted in completely the wrong direction. And unless photographers are your clients, then I would really advise against it. If you want to get into a pod, get into a pod with other people yes. from other businesses even. I mean, I do that as well. I suppose local to you, lo- local businesses to you, that would be a really valuable pod, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Any small businesses local to you that you want to support, cafes, um you know, small business accountants, anyone like that, that that you could potentially come into contact with, that you can you can join a pod with, and they can comment and like on yours. That will that will will uh, stretch your engagement quite considerably. I think that's great advice. Um, Cara is saying that she struggles with great captions, um, and she mm-hmm. is currently finding cool quotes that work with the photo. So, what would you, do you think? You, it needs to be um, quotes. Do you think you always use a story that's kind of personal to you? Do you think do you find yeah. that that works better? Quotes are fine, um, but I think you can overuse them, um, and I think people probably respond to something that you've got to say a little bit more. And it doesn't actually have to be an entire story. It doesn't have to be an essay. Even it could just be a one line or even one word that you could say that would just um, kind of sum up that particular photograph. I mean, again, it just comes down to intent, really, why you took the photograph in the first place. If you've got a reason you took that photograph, then you've got a caption already made there. So it just comes down to that, really. You share a lot of personal stuff on Mm. Instagram, Um, lots and lots of images of your children. In fact, it's mainly that. Would you say it's mainly that? That's what I I could mainly see. And then Mm -hmm. that's obviously easier for you to find a story there because this is your life. You know, this is your, your kids and you have all this emotion. Yeah. Um, What about those? So Shell has said that she thinks this is where she's going wrong with Instagram, that she's Mm. too shy to post anything personal. Mm. Do you think being personal is important? For me it is. For me it is because I think that um, the most unique thing about my business is me. So uh, if that's my selling point, then that's what I've got to use. And that's the only thing that's going to set you apart from every other photographer because, like I said, you know, there's competition around every corner, but the only thing that's unique about your business is you. And so you have to sell you. And um, and that's kind of what I try to do. I mean, I, I'm fairly open and honest about what goes on in uh, you know, in our household, and sometimes it's not pretty, yeah. but you know, it's people and mums especially can relate to that, and I think that's what makes you more personable and, and makes people kind of realize that you're a real person. Yeah. Um, you're not trying to, you know, to hide too much, um, and people respond well to that. So, um, yeah, and I know that there there are other people that are you know quite private about their their lives, and that's fine. And I think maybe you just need to share something you're passionate about. I mean, it doesn't have to be your family. It could be, you know, a consistent post about, you know, a walk in the park or or anything. It doesn't necessarily even have to involve people in your images. Um, but as long as there's something personal that you've written to go with that, yep. um, people just, respond as well. It, it makes it so much more relatable. I know that when I'm browsing social media, the things I engage with are the things that I go, oh, I know where you're coming from. You know, as a mum, if I see a photographer who's also a mum posting about maybe a a bad day she's had with the kids or some meltdown that her child has just had, I'm probably going to jump into that conversation and say, Mm. I hear you. You know, this happened to me last week or it's just relatable. It is. It is. So the more relatable the caption, the more the the more someone's actually going to comment. And actually, it's the comments that are going to make the difference, not the likes. Yeah. So um, that's kind of where you want people to be at. If you asking questions is always a really good one because asking a question sort of you're asking for a response, and in that respect, you're asking for people to comment. So if you ever get stuck, ask a question because yeah. um, that will help. Um, Caroline is saying that Instagram does seem to be more made for mutual engagement, totally unlike Facebook. But yeah. um, Lindsay has quite rightly said that it, Facebook, obviously, with this new algorithm change, is moving back towards this engagement. Yeah. So really, the 
the advice that you're giving for Instagram is now very applicable to Facebook too. Absolutely. Yeah. So I would just, I mean, they're owned by the same people. So you, you would expect that what happens with one is probably going to happen with the other. Um, so yeah. So anything that, that involves engagement on, on Instagram, I would probably, I would probably do on Facebook as well, just to cover your bases. <laughs> Absolutely. Rachel has asked a question that comes up all the time. Should we have two accounts? Should we have a personal Instagram and a business Instagram or should we have one? I think I know the answer you're going to give based on what you just said. Should we have one that does it all? Um, I only have one because I don't have time. Um, you know, I find it really, I mean, I do actually have another account, but it's for um, sort of a side business that I do anyway. So, um, and I've actually got a um a studio manager that, that sorts all of that social media side out for me, which is really good. so I can just engage on my own page. Um, yes, of course, if you if you want to have two separate accounts and you want to split your photography from your home life, then that's that's great. Um, I just I'm really time poor, so I find it easier just to to have the one. I think um, the engagement I think would go way down, though, wouldn't it? If you're if you're just strictly business on your business account and personal yeah. on your per you're not going to get that engagement on your business account when you're not being personal. No, I mean I'm predominantly more family and newborn photographer, so um, those are my clients, so the people that have got families, and so if I'm talking about my family, then that's relevant. I think for photographers that are potentially wedding photographers sometimes to have a separate account is probably advisable because your clients are brides and um you know generally younger brides without children so they're not as engaged in your home life and your children's meltdowns as maybe mums are oh, so they, they will soon become possibly they will that become, client and then bring them over to the other side. It just depends on your business, really. So you have to kind of find the relevant audience and then work out what, what whether that's going to be. For me, this kind of works, but I think if I was predominantly weddings, I would probably have a separate account okay. um, just that's to nice. get those clients. Yeah. Douglas is asking, do you find there's a particular time of day that produces more engagement than other times? I suppose for your ideal clients, your ideal client being a mother of young children, yes. would you say? or Yes, generally younger yeah. children. Um, so yes, I tend to post in the morning, and um, I'll get engagement at lunchtime. So it's just those those times. School pick up, you know, that sort of ten minutes before school pick up when you're sitting in your car waiting. That's when most of the mums are on Facebook and on that's Instagram. That's interesting. So I've never thought you, about that before. Yeah, so if you post around about sort of two in the afternoon or something, chances are your engagement will go up a little bit just because they're sitting there waiting and, and it's a captive audience really so you just have to be wise about when you post and and how you do that I mean I'm not particularly strict about what I do um I like to make sure that I post at least once a day so I'm consistent with that but um I don't get too hung up on you know on when it's on, yeah it's a it's a testing game isn't it you just you kind of have to throw stuff out there and see what sticks and it, Sometimes yeah. there's no yeah. rhyme nor reason to it. Just no, no, no. There's lots of tricks and stuff, but you can get completely caught up yep. in that. And and Instagram is only one part of your business, and social media is only one part of your business. And if it's bringing you business, then great, it's worth investing in. But there are so many other avenues that you really need to make sure you're concentrating on it as well. So, and if we go chasing all these different hacks then we're not concentrating on no. the timeless advice, which is just be helpful and engaging and there for your clients. Absolutely, yes, exactly. So there are lots of other channels that you need to make sure that you're, you're concentrating on as well. Um, and, yeah, like I said, if I'm time poor, I need to make sure I'm using my time efficiently so I can't spend hours and hours on Instagram yes. if it's not getting me any business. Absolutely. So I have to just be careful about that. So yeah. you, you mentioned earlier about um, being mindful that you're engaging with your clients on Instagram as well as other photographers. But mm -hmm. Rachel's asking, how do you even go about finding your potential clients on Instagram? How does that happen for you? Um, so I look for, um, well, you can just look via hashtags, look for anything with mummy related. Um, I, I look for mummy bloggers and then look for the people that are following them. 
um, because they always get high engagement. Um, Mum bloggers that are, you know, are fairly good on Instagram, you'll, you'll find lots of your mums are going to be hanging out there. Um, so that's kind of where you need to head for. Um, so I would probably do that. And then I suppose, yeah, head for local um, local people, local mum groups, um, yeah, lots of Facebook groups, school groups. I mean, schools are, you know, an amazing sort of network ready made for you. If you're a mum at school, you have already got that network there. What about your your hashtags that you use? You've got lots of hash, hashtags that you use, Abigail. Mm -hmm. How do you, how have you organised them? How do you um, know which ones to post with which images, or do you generally use the same ones? I kind of try and chop it around a little bit if I can. Um, you have to be careful not to reuse the same hashtags all the time because of shadow banning and all that kind of nonsense. So to be very careful about that. I mean, Instagram have, have cut down quite considerably on, on that. So if you post the same hashtags all the time, you're going to look like you're spamming and it will shut you down. So you, so you just have to be kind of wary of that, really. Um, I tend to use the hashtags that are relevant to particular um either competitions or if you want to get reposted so there are lots of people on instagram um that if you use their hashtag they'll repost your image and obviously that gets you better traction so if your image has sort of appeared in lots and lots of different places and that's really good um so i try and use those hashtags so the people that i follow if they've got a hashtag that where you can be featured i would tend to try and put one of those on as well so so you've got more of a chance of being featured, which means your image will, will be doubled up or even tripled on, on your Instagram, which actually really helps. So st strategy and changing it up. Yes, yes, all the time. <laughs> Excellent. So lots of people asking, what is an Instagram pod? It's simply just a group of people who get together. Um, I think there's a limit on the number. Is there a limit on how many can be in a pod? I'm not really sure. I mean, it just depends on how you do it, really. I, should, I would I'd say it's quite small, um, probably about eight to ten people, probably tops. Um, yes. And you, so, all, you all kind of commit to commenting and liking each other's images, don't you? Yes. Yeah, so the idea is that you then post into a, a, a direct message to say, I've just posted. And so everybody will then see that you've just posted and will go straight to your feed and comment uh, for you, which should then gain some traction and should help push your your uh, your post up the feed a bit. Great. So Shell's asked uh, an interesting question. She can definitely see the benefit of mixing up personal and business on Instagram, but she's wondering mm. about posting, you know, phone images, you know, just raw phone images of her family. Mm. If you were going if you were a professional photographer, do you think that that's a good idea or is that going to make your feed look a bit messy and inconsistent? Um, yeah, I don't do that. I, I only post the photographs that I take with my, my big girl camera. Um, now, I used to be one of those really diehard, 100% iPhone photographs don't actually, I thought it was cheating to start off with and I was really against it. And then I realised that everybody was doing it and now my feed looked a bit rubbish and everyone else looked really curated and gorgeous and I was like, oh no, I'm going to have to up my game now. Yeah. So now I don't post um, iPhone photographs at all um, simply because I don't, I, I don't actually take that many with my phone to be yeah. to be perfectly honest because I do have my camera with me most of the time so I tend to just regenerate those ones and then it's consistency I think which is really important in your feed so if you have got a couple of beautiful photographs and then you put a, an iPhone photograph which is not as great you, you you're kind of not really doing yourself any favours I wouldn't have said. Yeah, I suppose it's all about the I mean some people are amazing with their iPhone and they're into the yeah. you know iPhoneography yeah. but it, yeah. it does I think if you're wanting to reach clients and you're a professional mm. photographer you have to have a high standard on there don't you? Yeah I mean this is this is basically your online portfolio and you have to look at it that way so if you wouldn't put that in your portfolio then don't put it on your Instagram feed. Yeah. Um, because at any one time you want somebody to see that image as the, as the best one that you're doing, you're, you're posting at the time. So I would just, I would just be wary. Oh, and if, and then if that's, if you just want to post iPhone photographs, then again, go and get a, a, a personal feed, you know, completely separate to your business. 
so that you've got that consistency. Absolutely. So Diana, a few people have mentioned this, but Diana has said, hi, Abigail, you've mentioned interacting with your clients. Do you follow your clients back if they follow you? Yes. Yes. Yes, I would. Yeah. Yeah. I don't tend to on Facebook. It's I don't I find Facebook a bit of a different uh, place. I have my, my business Facebook page, which is fine. And, and, you know, my clients follow me there, which is great. And that appears in their personal feed. That's brilliant. Um, with my Facebook personal Facebook page, I tend to not not to sort of engage too much. Um, I don't actually use it all that much, to be yeah, fair. It's just, it, it's just what you're going all in on, isn't it? So you're, yeah. you're all yeah. all about Instagram. I've yeah. always been all about Facebook. So I've always befriended my clients on Facebook. Yeah. And I've made sure that I've followed their kids as they get older and commented when it's their birthday and all that stuff. Because yeah. that was where I was, you know, I was putting all my eggs there. It just yeah. depends where your where yeah, yeah. strategy is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I suppose, you know. Um, okay, let me just make sure there's, I've covered these questions. Natalie has said she's been told to do a hashtag for her business and use it with every post. Is that mm. something she should be doing? So hashtag Natalie Banton photography. Do you do that on yours? I do do that. Yes, I do do that. Yeah. And I've done that pretty much every post that I've, I've ever posted will have my hashtag on it. Yeah. So then you've got a, a huge collection of the images that you've posted that you can send somebody to. Um, one more question about stories. Do you do Instagram stories? I do try. Now, this is only something that I've been engaged with recently, um, and that's simply because I've had a really rubbish iPhone up to this point that just had absolutely zero memory. So I couldn't even... It was one of those... My children always got... I've always got my phone. They're always taking photographs with it. Yeah. And using up all of my memory. So whenever I go to take a video or anything, there was I had to delete about a thousand photographs of their forehead before I could actually do anything with it. So um, I've only recently got got a photograph with, with I've got a phone with a with a decent amount of memory, and so now I can actually do little videos and and things for stories. But yes, I would definitely encourage the stories if you can because that will the traction that you get from those is even better. Yeah. And they're they're bringing in some really clever things now with stories which are which are kind of due to get more engagement with your with your audience as well Excellent. So, and you can be a bit more personal with them as well yeah it gives people a real insight into your life doesn't it and yes so many of us think our lives are so boring but people are so yeah. nosy they love it they love they seeing what love you're getting it. up to they do love it and actually those iphone photographs save them for your stories because actually that's where they can they can be yeah. and they're absolutely it's perfectly acceptable for you to put them on your stories and that's great if that's what you want to share and then keep your professional images for your feed and then you've kind of got you've covered every base then great that that you've actually just answered nikki's question so that's awesome um okay let's move on to something else if you if anyone has more instagram questions pop them in the chat but i'm going to move on to a, a slightly different topic because mm. I was first struck by your video that's on your website. Oh, um, it's yeah. something we've been talking about inside our membership is this is this need for video on websites just to help you just raise the bar, stand mm -hmm. out a little bit more and connect, really connect quickly with yeah. your visitors. Um, yeah. Yours is awesome. I absolutely Thank love you. it. I love that it features <laughs> you and your family, but I got complete office envy. <laughs> It's what you had this there's this scene in it where you're behind your iMac and you have these dark shelves behind you it's this yeah. amazing scene yeah I love it I know well I have to I have to let you into a little secret that's actually with my husband's desk ah. <laughs> this is my office now <laughs> I can see why you used it though it's that room looks awesome yeah, so so it's actually that's actually part of our lounge, and um, oh, that's where my husband's desk was. Yeah, but it was easier to film in there because I had a pokey, tiny little office at the time. We couldn't really do very much in, so we thought there was a better place to um, to actually film it. So if, you, if yeah. you haven't seen that video, guys, you have to go to um, <laughs> Abigail's website, which is I think I've put it in the description. Um, and you can watch the film and you can see this fabulous frame of her <laughs> editing at this desk and it just looks like something something beautiful from Pinterest. You, you <laughs> really want that office. Okay, so tell us about the video though. What made you um, 
make that move because I know it's something that all of us think, oh, I must do that. I must do that because we know yeah. what impact it has. But mm -hmm. it's kind of a, a bit of a thought to do oh, it. it. Is. It is. It is. Um, I was actually really lucky because the girl that filmed that was um, was a good friend of mine. Um, she actually did my wedding video, so I've known her for a really long time. And she's a fantastic video videographer, like really incredible. Um, and she was doing some series on. Uh, she was doing a series on a, on different businesses at the time. So asked if I could do um, one for her. Um, so obviously, I jumped at the chance. Um, but yes, all it was was a very quick sort of interview. And I think, again, it's that being authentic. It's having sure that you are saying exactly what you're all about. Because um, a video needs to be short. It needs to be to the point. But you need to get your personality across. Um, you need to get your values across. Because those are the things that are going to really resonate with people that want to employ you. And um yeah, to me, I'm all about my family, so I needed to show that. I needed to show, you know, if I want to take photographs of other families, I need need them to see that I can do this. Absolutely. You know, this is what I do. This is where I'm naturally kind of comfortable in that arena, and, and you can be comfortable with me taking your photograph because I know what you're doing and how you're feeling. So yeah, it's important. It's, it's really important. We're, we're quite lazy now, aren't we? When we're browsing websites, we're not very keen on looking at page after page after page. And it's no. easy as a photographer to put together your website and think, well, you know, everyone's going to read every page and they just no. don't. No. No. If you have this video that sums you and your business up in two minutes, it's exactly. like the client loves it because they get a yeah. feel for you in two minutes. Yeah, they know exactly how you sound. They know what you look like. You know, they know a little bit about you, you personally, which means you already have a conversation opener as soon as they, they meet you. You know, they feel like they've met your children. You, you're already kind of halfway there. The ice is already broken, really, yeah. in terms of that initial conversation, that initial connection with your, with your clients. So it's, it is quite important to kind of get that across. And like you say, people don't read the About Me pages very often. I know I don't. Um, so, yeah, if it's, if it's easier just to click play, and that's what you do. Plus, it will keep people on your website for that little bit longer. They love it. They, I love watching videos like that. It's every time I see one, I'm so impressed that someone mm -hmm. has actually got off their butt and actually done it because it's, it's, yeah. it's the thing that gets put down to the bottom of the list. It really, it, it really does. I mean, I, I did have one on there before that I actually filmed with my, um, I got my nephew to film it actually. Um, and he just came along with me on a, on a photo shoot and just did a few sort of, frames of me photographing other children and stuff like that so I think it doesn't matter the quality doesn't necessarily matter it's what you say and how you put it together so um and you know something's better than nothing to be honest with you so you're better off putting something up there even if you're not massively happy with it and then work on something else whilst it's still there rather than not doing it at all definitely done is better than perfect without exactly doubt. Do yeah. clients mention it? Do people who who get in touch with you to inquire, do they talk about it? Yes, they do. And if they've seen it, they will. They do feel like they, they already know. So a lot of them say, oh, I feel like I already, I've already met you, even though I haven't. Um, yeah. They find yeah. it really strange. Um, but yeah, I think it does. It does work. It does. It does make people feel more comfortable in, in your company. So and if you're meeting somebody for the first time, I mean, occasionally I've met clients, you know, in a car park. I don't I don't really know what they look like, but they immediately know what I look like. So, you know, yeah, they exactly. come towards me, which is really nice. And I'm sure it sets you apart from your competition as well. When people are browsing, looking for a photographer, and they see that someone has this professionally put together showreel, if you like, that yeah. you immediately think, oh, this person is someone who takes her business very seriously and goes that extra step it just gives you the yeah. feeling of trust and that yeah. extra level yeah exactly I think it does give you some sort of authority in a way so um yeah it kind of helps I it's, think it's fab <laughs> I love it it's definitely something I would encourage everyone listening to think about put it on the list and 
get a video done at some point it'll be yeah. a, a great addition to your website and your social media as well oh definitely yeah because you can use little snippets on on social media on, on instagram so i've got a little sort of five seconds worth of that film that i've put on instagram before which got a lot of traction and um, that you can repeat you know every so often you can pop it on again brilliant it's good. So let's talk about you and your family um, mm. and how you, so you have these four children. Uh, you said your eldest is 13, is that right? Yes, she's, yeah, she turned 13 in November and uh, my youngest four. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we have four children, four, yeah. a business, a photography business, but something mm. we have not mentioned and I saw on your website is that you also have this online store for I photographers. Do. I do, I do. Um, so this is another little sort of sideline um, for me. I just noticed that in terms of sort of getting traction and, and improving your SEO, e-commerce sites are actually a lot better um, than a normal WordPress uh, blog site, for example. Um, and you have to work quite hard to get your SEO working properly for that. And e-commerce does actually... Um, get more traction, gets more um, more of an audience. So the idea was to kind of marry the two. Um, plus there was a little kind of space I noticed that lots of photographers weren't being, um, you have to go to lots and lots of different places in order to get all of your photography equipment and all your little gadgets and all your little bits and pieces. Um, I used to run workshops, so I had a lot of, uh, sort of budding photographers that kept asking me where I get my camera straps from and where do you get this lens from, where do you get this, where do you get this. So I just thought I'd put together a small collection um, of little bits and pieces that um, you can go to all in one space and go and have a look. It's awesome. So you, you have camera straps, you have, um, do you have jewellery there as well? Little got bits. Some jewellery, got some clothing. Yeah, it's like a little mixture of everything. Um, for all camera geeks <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. And, and their friends and family because you know what it's like as soon as you get camera and you start this having this interest in photography every birthday every Christmas you get camera get related else. gifts exactly so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's it's yeah exactly yeah so it works really well but how yeah. do you how do you balance it all though Abigail so something that again we talk about a lot here is most of us are very time poor and yeah. have a lot of commitments. You have four children. You have two businesses. What's your secret? <laughs> um, I think it's taken a while to kind of get that balance. And uh, sometimes the balance goes off occasionally. It just depends when you get thrown a curveball and something happens. Um, but generally, I mean, I do have a studio manager now, so that, that really helps me so I can be a bit more efficient with what I need to do. Um, I think your prices have uh, make a big difference. So if you're pricing your work at the, correctly, then you should get the right amount of work so you're not overworked. So I, you know, I only take on a certain amount of clients that I know that I can handle um, at the right price, and that really helps as well. So, yeah, with Alicia, uh, my assistant, she's, yeah, she's really, really efficient. And I can, you know, I can pass off things to her that, so that I'm not, I'm not spending ages and ages doing things that don't really get me anywhere. Can, can we spend just two minutes talking about the studio, your studio manager? Because the, again, yeah. this is another thing that people have this desire, this, oh, wouldn't that be wonderful that in an ideal yeah. world, mm -hmm. did you wait? for an ideal world or did you just make that decision and make sure that you made it pay for itself if you know what I mean? Yes yeah that is exactly what, it, what what's happened um, I was really lucky she approached me um, I was already looking for somebody but hadn't really put an advert out there and actually it was just a really great coincidence that she happened to be looking for for similar kind of work um, and it it all kind of happened really well um, but yes, it's it is one of those things you just have to make it work because if you really want to use your time efficiently, then you've got to make sure that 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 you can afford to do that. Um, and if you want your business to thrive, there's only so much you can do without you needing some help. So, so there's something about just jumping into a decision like that before it's the ideal. The, the conditions are ideal because you're almost forced to make it work aren't you you are you absolutely are forced and I think and it and it does 
once you do it, once you make that jump, you realise what, yeah, what the benefits are actually. It's, it's a life changing thing, isn't it? I, it I, is. I took on um, my friend Fiona as a studio manager way before I could afford it, and it was yeah. the scariest thing I ever did. Mm. I spent two months solidly working with her so that she knew exactly what she was doing, and then after that, it was, why did I not do this years ago? This is yeah, it was exactly. just amazing. Yes, yeah, it makes a huge difference. So, um, and it's just good to be able to have somebody else to, to, you know, bounce ideas off of, you know, she'll check an email and then we'll check it back and forth. And, uh, you know, it just, it's really nice to have that kind of sounding board as well. It really helps. Um, yeah. And it also forces me to be really efficient because I have to make sure that I've got things for her to do. Yes. So I then have to... I, you know, it's a kick up the backside for me as well to make sure that you know. And, and I, systems I, as well. I, before Fiona joined yeah. me, I was a bit of a mess. It was all very chaotic and it forced yeah. me to, you know, get my business management software and my CRM yeah. all in, in order and my workflow exactly. and all that stuff that I just was yes. a bit hash bash. Yes, it exactly. It makes you organized. It really does. And if they're really organized too, they kind of give you a real boost because they realize where the you know the pitfalls are they can see them from a completely different perspective and that really helps um because then they can sort of show you where where there's little holes in and where you can improve your business which really which is really good really beneficial i suppose the, it's the right it's having the right person though isn't it and and having the time something i know i'm very conscious of time so i'm going to round up oh, yes. in one minute because <laughs> i know you have to go get your little list I do. um something that i hear a lot is people take on a student a studio manager and it doesn't work and more often than not when I chat to them I realize that it's because they maybe didn't spend that time with that person setting up the systems and making yeah. sure that they absolutely understood everything that was going on and or yeah. not being able to let go yes that's really hard and it's difficult to let go it really is but I think it is to do with communication and making sure that that you manage their expectations um as to you know what you expect them to do, as long as they know that, um, then it should work. But uh, communication is huge, making sure that, that 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 you're both understanding what each other is trying to achieve at the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely, great advice, Abigail. It's been so <laughs> wonderful to chat with you. I know you have to oh, go off you. on the school run. Thank um, you. I'm sorry. <laughs> everyone has been really engaged we've got had lots of questions lots of oh, comments lovely. um i know that everyone's rushing to see your website and apparently that lots of them haven't been able to get onto it i think we've crashed your site <laughs> oh, sorry <laughs> i'll <laughs> sort that <out> later <laughs> when, when that happens it usually just happens for a few minutes guys so keep trying and you'll get on yeah. so don't worry about that yeah, but yeah, abigail just, thank just, you yeah. again and thanks everyone for joining us and engaging with us it's been an absolute pleasure i'll make sure this thank stays you. up on the group so that yeah. everyone can catch the replay, but it'll also go on to YouTube and the blog and everything. And so I'll send you a copy, okay? Thank you very much. It's lovely to talk to you. You too, Abigail. <laughs> Thanks again. Thanks then. Bye-bye.